One of the reasons that I really like Obsidian is that it allows me to build my own cross-reference library. This was really the first thing that I thought of when I understood the value of bidirectional links as first presented to me in Roam Research. I like Obsidian for a lot of reasons. Uh, the big one is that it is a better writing environment, but it is also built a little bit differently than Roam, which causes me to set up my cross-reference library a little bit different. because so I wanna have not just my sermon notes in here, but also my ideas and articles that I happen to be writing, emails that I'm gonna send, newsletters, things like that. So I want it all in one place. Obsidian does that really well, but it's built on top of all these individual text files. So in order to get this set up in Obsidian, I had to do a little bit of a convoluted process, and I wanna walk you through that in this video. So first thing I did is I actually got some help from my buddy Joe Bielig, who took the King James Version of the Bible and split it into individual text files. So if I go into the Bible folder, these are all the folders for the books of the Bible. Each uh, book of the Bible has folders for individual chapters and each chapter has individual files for individual verses. Now that's gonna be important in a minute, but let me just show you here real quickly. Genesis 1.1, for example, this is the actual file. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And on the left side of this split pane, you see the actual text. And then on the right side, that's the preview. Okay, so everything in Obsidian is built using Markdown. And so I'm using Markdown elements, linking these verses then to uh, other verses and other notes that I've taken, effectively building this cross-reference library, kind of like you would find in the middle column on some of those like cross-reference or study Bibles. All right, so I have a, a separate folder here for all of my sermon notes. And I've actually been doing these since September of 2017. That's when I started taking sketch notes inside of good notes. I've been doing it for probably a couple years before then by hand, but I absolutely love good notes for sketch noting. It's, it's really great. I've been doing it for a long time. Don't ever see myself switching from this. Uh, and then I take those sketch notes that I'd taken in good notes. I export those as individual image files. And I just have them as JPEGs because I don't need something super high res for this. I just need a reference. Okay. And what I've done is I have put the JPEG from today's message on my desktop. Then I use an application called Drop Zone, which is kind of like a shelf app. Okay. And I'm going to pull all this together in just a second. So what I'll do is I will go to the folder for March of 2021, and I will right click to create a new note and I'll name it for the day, so March 28th, 2021. I do a little bit of metadata at the top, so I will do three dashes like this and then put tags, and we'll call this sketch notes. All right, and now uh, you can see on the right side, if I switch this to preview mode, what that looks like. So there's the metadata, All right? And then I put who the, uh, who the sermon was by, which in this case was my pastor. And I have a page for him and everybody else. So Dr. James Willoughby. Uh, the double brackets make that a page. And what that allows me to do is go to his page and see all of the sermons that he has preached. And I did that uh, this last year, uh, 2020, I actually used this method pulled all the sketch notes that I had taken from all of his sermons and put them into a, a book that I had printed and gave it to him for his birthday, which was kind of something that I was thinking about when I started tagging these things this way. All right, and then I'll put in the image file. Now you can get images into Obsidian a lot of different ways. I like to use the actual file, which I put in drop zone. And then I've got a keyboard shortcut here, which opens up the shelf. And then I can just drag this into the file where I want it. Okay, so there's my sketch note. On the right, I have some specific nomenclature here, which I use to denote specific verses. All right, so the next thing I'll do is I will actually create a level two header for scriptures. And then a level six heading for each individual 
uh, passage of scripture that I want to reference. So Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And then I'm not going to link to that Hebrews 12, 1 verse, but I'm going to actually embed it. And the way to do that is the double brackets with the exclamation point in front, which you can see it actually created for me automatically when I dragged in my sketchnote file. So double brackets, and I will start typing just to, and the search will help me find this really quickly. So Hebrews 12.1, there's that verse. And then likewise, the one after that, Hebrews 12.2. Okay, and on the right-hand side, you can see what that looks like, and I've got those verses embedded now. Uh, but also in the graph on the left, I see these dots appearing that are linked to this March 20th, or March 28th, sorry, let me fix that quick, 2021 note. All right, now that is going to grow the more verses that I add, and that's gonna be the backbone of me studying these things uh, in the future. So I'll add the other notes here. I'm not gonna put the whole chapter for John chapter 12, but there were a couple verses in particular here, so I will embed uh, John 12, 12 and John 12, 13. All right, there's John 12, 12. John 12, 13, and the last one, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Okay, so now I have this notes page from the sermon today, and I can go back and I can review this, which is great, but I like the being able to tie these things together so I can study the previous notes that I had taken as well. So let's actually close the edit view here uh, because these are all linked. And what I can do now is I can take this uh, March 28th one, for example, and I can go to, uh, let's just say Hebrews 12 one. All right, so we click on this. And that's gonna take us to Hebrews 12.1, but it's gonna show me all of the other notes now that have linked to Hebrews 12.1. And I've got March 28th, 2021, which I can open in a uh, another pane by holding the command key when I click it. All right, and I can also, let's go back to Hebrews 12.1 here. All right, so we'll click on this note to make it the active one, our graph updates. And I can open up some of these other ones as well, like March 24th. March 15th, 2019. Okay, and you get the idea, but if we put these in the preview mode, now I have a whole bunch of messages that I have heard and my own notes linking these things together. And I can study these together and not just study the Hebrews 12 verse one verse, but I can see all of the other verses that have kind of been linked to that uh, in different ways throughout history. And I, I find this really valuable because for me, the value of studying the Bible is in the inspiration that I get. I've gone to Bible college and I understand the some of the original meanings of the original languages, you know, and you can get a lot of insights from that. But I think that information has a limit to its usefulness. It, there needs to be inspiration it has to, the light bulb has to go on and it has to come alive inside of your spirit for it to really kind of affect the way that you go about your life and have a, an impact really in your, in your day-to-day -day life and really matter where it, where it counts. And so I like this because I can now kind of study out these themes and see these connections that I've made previously. And this is now functioning as like an external brain for me and I can jump from thing to thing and not worry about forgetting those links or not even realizing that those links were there in the first place. You know, when I took these notes in 2019, for example, I had no idea they were going to be linked to these verses in the future. And actually, these are three separate messages by three separate people. Okay, so I can take everything that I've collected here and see how it all ties together. And I can not just find things from the top down. You know, that's typical note taking is you write something down, you stick it in a folder and you forget about it completely until you recall it and then you go back and you try to find it and then you can search for it. And because 
you captured a certain way, that search will allow it to, to surface. But this is kind of like a bottom up approach or kind of like an inside out approach where I don't have to have the thought first. I can just start with the notes I took this week and I can just kind of follow these chains and see where they go and see what kind of inspiration I I had when I when I captured these notes in the first place, but also what new inspiration I can gather as I go. And I really like playing with these notes this way. Uh, if this was the only way that I used Obsidian, it would still be a worthwhile investment for me. Uh, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm able to tie each of these notes and each of these ideas into other notes that I take from books that I read and things like that. So uh, I'm excited to see where this goes. It's still kind of early stages for me. Um, but this is how I take my scripture notes inside of Obsidian and how it allows me to build that cross-reference library that I kind of always wanted to do, but never had the ability to tie these things together before.